Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel once again, and uh, I hope you're doing well. First of all, I probably gotta address my crazy hair at the moment. It looks like this. <laughs> it's growing, and uh, he is covering my forehead and eyes, and it's really annoying when I film, so I decided to just do this, and I can't get haircut during the lockdown. But anyway, hope you're doing well. And today I'm gonna talk about uh, this amazing, amazing book that was written in 1899, 121 years ago, in Tokyo. And the interesting thing is, well, it's called uh, Japanese Storytellers, and it was written in French by uh, this person called Jules Adams. I got cheat sheet right here. And uh, it was translated into English by this uh, translator called Osman Edwards. Cheat sheet, cheat sheet. So uh, it was written first in French and then translated into English. But it's got beautiful illustrations. And uh, the copyrights expired, so I can just post it here freely, which is exciting. And uh, it talks about. Um, what Rakugo world was like in uh, 1899, which was uh, Meiji era, Meiji period. And that was one of the heydays of Rakugo history. Uh, there was Sanyute Encho, uh, one of the greatest masters of all time. And also there was Kairakute Black the First. Uh, he was a British Rakugo performer who was born in Adelaide, Australia, uh, but moved to Japan and grew up there and uh, became uh, one of the superstars of the day. And uh, there's mention about him in this book as well, actually maybe two or three pages dedicated just about him. So uh, it's a really, really exciting book. I can probably easily say this is one of the uh, top three most exciting books I've ever read. So. Uh, are you excited? I'm very excited. Can you tell by my shiny eyes? I'm very excited to talk about this book. And I'm going to probably talk about this book over maybe two or three episodes. I don't know how long it's going to be, but I hope you'll enjoy it. And let's begin. This is the first illustration that appears in this book. This is a picture of Yose. Yose is a theater that is dedicated to Rakugo. And what's really fascinating about this picture is that, as you can see right here, there's name of Sanyute Encho. As I mentioned earlier, he was one of the biggest Rakugo performers of all time, and he still is probably. But what's even more fascinating is, uh, look here, there's name of Eikokujin Black, which means Englishman Black. So there's name of Kairakute Black the first right here, a really prominent spot. That means he must have been a really big superstar back in the days. The book says there are 243 yose in Tokyo alone. That's a really amazing number because you know how many there are in Tokyo right now? How many full-time venues? There are only four in entire Tokyo. But he says there are 243. Well, there's a disclaimer. He says, if the most recent statistics may be trusted. But even with disclaimers, there are probably at least 200 yose in Tokyo. But he also says each will hold between 500 and 1,000 persons. Mm, that's really huge though. I kind of doubt that uh, figure. Maybe he probably exaggerated here. But we can tell that there were 200 yose in Tokyo and uh, uh, Rakugo culture was a huge part of Japanese life. This is the entrance of yose. As you can see, two men are wondering whether to go inside or not, checking out which performance performing that night. Meiji period was when Japanese started embracing Western culture and we learned from the West. Uh, so people wore kimono uh, predominantly. Some people wore suit and tie, but most of them wore kimono. But uh, they usually had like one Western accessory, like hat or Western glasses or things like that. It was a real time of East meets West. 
This is the picture of inside a yose, and you can see a performer dancing probably kapore, which is the kind of Japanese traditional dancing. And what's fascinating is right here, there is a kettle probably boiling on stage, which is quite different from modern yose. And this man is really fascinating. He is dressed up in western cloth, suit and tie, and deer stalker like Sherlock Holmes and also as you can see here a uh, lot of men are wearing western hat as well to be continued